Hey everybody, now it's time to start talking about one of the most important things that you can learn, and that's your basic obedience program outline. Once you've put in the sweat equity and all that and developed your uh, toolbox, it's time to make your tool belt into a little bit more action, and that's to have a good solid outline for your program so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And that's what I'm going to show you. The most important thing that all dog trainers need to learn is basic obedience and having a good program that is fluid and really uh, incremental in its advancement is what really makes things work. Now, there are a few keys that you need to know before you get into this, and here are some other principles about what makes the program work. The first thing is when you teach something, teach the opposite, okay? So, opposites are a key factor to your, your dog training. Whatever you want to teach a dog to stop barking, you know, the good thing that you can do is to put the barking on command. Once you teach the dog to bark on command, then you can teach it the opposite behavior, which is quiet. Um, I don't like to teach a dog to not bark by using anti-bark collars and things like that because the bark is a very crucial thing to a dog. A, it's their voice. It's how they communicate naturally besides body language. Also, barking is a very good way of uh, how dogs relieve their stress. If they have a lot of stress or a lot of energy, getting them to bark on command is a good way to burn off some of that energy. So normally if I'm about to do some training and I want them to be a little bit more calm, I'll get them to bark over and over and over and over again before we start training to bring their energy levels down a little bit and then I can cap it and continue on with training. Or if after training I want the dog to relax more, say if I amped it up, I'll make it bark, bark, bark until I get that level of calmness and they relax a little bit. So opposites are a very key factor whenever you start making your program. Whenever you teach one behavior, teach the opposite. Another thing that you really want to start figuring out is how to chain things together. I call this making routines. Humans are creatures of habit and dogs are creatures of generalization. Um, I've kind of figured this out by doing obedience but it really hit hard whenever I started doing narcotics detection, things like that. Um, traditionally, you would teach it to indicate on one drug, and then once it learned that, you would teach it to indicate on another drug. Well, in my program, we put all of the drugs together in a cocktail, teach the dog to indicate on that cocktail, and then start having it do um, the individual scents. Well, that's kind of mainlining and mainstreaming those odors, and to get a lot of behavior all at once, well, the same thing with this. Once a dog learns something, if we can tie it to something that it already knows, then it's, that transition helps a little bit better. So these are very important to teach opposites and to also have a routine. So whenever you make your program, you want to keep those in mind. So what I normally do is on day one, as soon as I get the dog, I'll load the marker of yes. Now, if you don't know what loading the mark is, then go back to the principles videos in that series and take some notes because you're cheating, you're skipping ahead. Go back, start from the beginning, and get back to here. Now, welcome back. So we're going to be continuing with that yes. Loading the mark, I simply say yes, speed, yes, speed, yes, speed, yes, speed, over and over and over again until I've classically conditioned that dog to understand that the word yes means it's getting a reward. Now how I will prove this is, if the dog's not paying attention and it's like walking around and I say yes, if that dog orientates towards me and gets excited and I can see it's looking for the reward, then I know I've properly classically conditioned this. Now the problem with this is you have to get the dog to take food from your hand. Um, normal times when you get a fresh dog, sometimes they don't really want to take food from you. What are two reasons? Either A, they're fearful. They, they, are really stressed and they're nervous. So what I like to do is pretty much get them accustomed to me and let them learn that they're not getting fed unless they take it from my hand. I'm not going to put their food in a bowl. I'm going to offer them food. Here you go. If they take it, 
great. I'll start loading the mark. They build trust. They understand. They realize that I'm not a bad guy. I'm nothing to be scared of. And we can continue on. Get them over here. Eventually, their food hunger, their hunger motivation will trump their fear. And then we can make forward progress at that point. Another time is if you get a pet dog that has, you know, constant access to food, then it doesn't really have the, the hunger drive to really want to take food from hand. Why take it from your hand if I know I can go take it from the bowl whenever I'm hungry? Um, this is also dogs that are obese, they're overweight. They're not hungry because they can go days and days without food and they'll be totally fine. So what I do with day one, as soon as I get the dog, I'll take out all its food rations and will only get fed by hand. If they don't take food by hand, then they don't eat. I don't care if it takes a day, two days, however long it takes them to build that trust to eat from my hand, that's when I know I have them in my care, I have them uh, understanding what's going on. Then I can build that rapport and then load that mark yes. Usually on the second day, because for me, usually one day I can get them to take food. On the second day, we'll work the place command. And it's really important in my program because it's multifaceted. You can do a lot of things with the place cot. It's good for behavior modification, but I use the place cot to teach um, behavior, to teach positions. So I tell them to place, I can teach them to sit, down, stand, things like that. But they have to know what the place command is. So I will start with the luring and then understanding and proofing. And I'll take the dog, have them place, they place, I mark, and I reward. So these pair together. I also like to use cots when I use the place command because as you've seen on you know, previous videos, to learn, you really have to have activity and emotion tied into it to tie it all together. When you are learning something through activity and emotion, it will have more of an impact on you. The place command, since it's a cot that's elevated off the ground, the dog's looking at me for the reward because I'm luring it. It knows exactly when all four feet are off the ground, so whenever I mark it, it's like taking a snapshot. It's like taking a picture of that exact moment, and they understand, hey, when I am off the ground onto this cot, I get that reward. So it's a very good, easy, uh, cut-and-dry, black-and-white approach to what's expected, what's not expected, and it's a step four that we can use for our um, language creation. Um, also, you can use the place command if the dogs have behavior problems such as if they bolt out the door every time you open it, well, if you teach them the place command, they can't run out the door if they're on the place command. If they have a problem jumping up on people when people come, they can't jump if they're on the place. See what I'm coming with that? So now what I'll do is I'll incorporate the place and the recall. Remember what I said, when you want to teach opposite behaviors together? Well, the place command, I'm sending the dog away from me onto the cot. If I'm sending it away from me, I want to be able to recall it towards me. So now what I'll start doing is working on that duration and the distance. I'll tell the dog to place. It goes place, I'll create distance and recall the dog. I'll tell it to place, I'll create distance and recall the dog. Now, what I'll do is I'll create that distance, say place, the dog will place, say good, using the duration marker. I'll take a step back, good, duration marker. I'll recall the dog when he gets back to me, I'll mark and I reward. Notice though, I'm marking and rewarding the recall. This is very crucial, I've said it in previous videos, but the biggest problem positive reinforcement trainers find themselves in is they do one-on-one -on -one reward. So, yes reward, yes reward, yes reward, place reward, place reward, place reward, place reward, recall reward, and they just do this one for one over and over, and then eventually they say, why is it every time I don't reward my dog, it clocks out? It says, that's not part of our agreement, and it doesn't you know, stay motivated anymore. Well, that's because you've created that language with the dog to understand that every time it does what it's told, it's supposed to get a reward. The second it doesn't get that reward, you broke that trust, you broke that training, and the dog's done. So in the very beginning stages, I want to start incorporating intermittent rewards. So, yes, reward, yes, reward, place, reward, place, reward, place, good, recall, reward. So now he's starting to learn 
he will get the reward, but he'll have to continue listening to me to get it. Once again, we're working that pre-mag principle, adding on to it, and keeping those motivation lessons. Next, what I'll start working on, I'll work the place, the recall. Now I'll start working the sit. I tell the dog to sit. I go up to the dog, and then, or I tell the dog to place. I'll go up to the dog, and then I'll lure it into a sit. Over time, I'll add it on cue. Sit, 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 so on and so forth. And then I put it into the chain or into the routine. Place. The dog places. Create distance. Recall the dog. Now you can make this a routine. You say place, sit, here, sit. And if you recall the dog and have the dog sit in front of you, you're forming the what they call the front, where the dog fronts and sits in front of you. So you can start creating alternate. You can say place, sit, at the place. You can just say place, recall, sit. You can change this up however you want. Next, we'll do place, recall, sit, down. When the dog's in the place cot, I'll teach it to down from a sit. I'll say sit and then down. Sit, then down. And then I'll teach the dog to down from standing. So I'll say place, and places, down. And the dog goes down. So you need to make sure the dog knows how to down from the place and down from the sit. This stage is optional, but I try to incorporate it when I can. Place. Recall, sit, down, stand. If the dog's very operant and it learns freely and it's very engaged and it's easy for me to teach it to stand, I'll go ahead and teach it to stand. This is really good when you go to vets, groomers, and you can just say stand and the dog stands. They get inspected, groomed underneath, whatever is needed. But if it, the dog just really apprehensive to this and really... Um, fights against this, I don't push it on the dog in the, in the basic obedience because it's not a needed position. So why create apprehensiveness, tension, friction, and, and turn the dog off? I want this to be fun. So we'll incorporate this if the dog starts you know, to give this freely. If not, we'll move on. And if I can get it to stand, now I can incorporate this back into the routine. I can say place, sit, stand. Down, stand, here, sit, down, stand. I can mix this up however I want, and at the end, reward the dog. So you want the dog to be able to stand from a sit and stand from a down, okay? The same way you want to be able to down from a sit, stand from a sit. You want the dog to be able to sit from a down and stand from a down. These should be interchangeable. The last part of our obedience routine is the place, the recall, the sit, the down, the stand. Now we'll work the heel. Now, I will start forming this for sport dogs and things like that, but it's not really that necessary for basic obedience. But what I'll do is I'll place the dog, the dog places. I can stand next to the car with the dogs at the angle, you know, in the right heel position, and just reward, 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 reward. But most of the time what I'll do is I'll place the dog, I'll recall the dog, as it's in route towards me, I will turn to where the dog comes up and I'll lure it with my left hand into the heel position. When it comes in, I'll mark it. Or when it comes in, I'll tell it to sit in the heel position and then I'll mark it. So I'll say, here, and as the dog's running, I'll say, heel, Yes. So now the dog goes, okay, whenever I'm on your left side in this position, I get that reward. We move from there. Um, you can also stand and face the dog here as the dog's coming. Say heel, and then you move it and lure it into the proper healing position. You'll see these on future videos. But this is the prime of the, the, the learning program for basic obedience. Yes. We use yes to place. We use place to recall. We use place to teach to sit. We all tie this in together. So we teach the sit from the place command. We teach the sit from the recall. We teach the down from the sit. We teach the down from the place. And they intertwine with each other beautifully. 
After this, there's only two things we really need to work on. If the dog places, recalls, sits, down, stands, and heals, the only two things we have to work on at this point are distraction and socializing. Now, during this, we will work on distance and duration. Now we just have to get the dog to do it under distractions. Now I'll start incorporating this in other places. I'll take the dog on a walk. I'll incorporate these in daily life as well. So when I'm on a walk, if we come to an intersection, I'll say sit. The dog sits. Good. I'll tell it to down. It downs. I'll tell it to stand. And I'll tell it to heel as we go across the street. Or I can say sit, walk across the street, then recall the dog. So you can change this up however you want into your own routine. You can sit down the dog, go across the street, recall the dog, continue on. I like to go to the park on our walks. I'll tell him to place on top of a bench, and then when he's on the bench, I'll tell him to sit, stand, down, stand, sit, down, sit, stand, whatever I want on the bench, just to get him warmed up. Then I'll tell him to down, and I will go find some people to recruit. I'll say, excuse me, do you mind if I use you to socialize my dog? They'll say, well, of course. If they say no, chances are they're afraid of dogs. Don't be mad at them. But I'll give them treats. I'll say, what I want you to do is just stand here, act like statues. Don't look at them. Don't pet them. Don't do nothing. I'm going to walk the dog around you. He's going to have to ignore you. If he starts smelling of you, licking on you, just ignore him. Afterwards, when I put him in a sit, I want you to come and then uh, give them the rewards. And normally, they'll say, oh, yeah, okay, absolutely fine. I put him there, I bring the dog in, we do figure eights, go between them, I call the dog back, I come to sit, good boy. Then they come up, they greet him properly, and then they reward him. What this does to the dog, it learns that even when there's people around, he has to focus on me. That getting people's attention doesn't mean he's going to get rewarded for it. He only gets rewarded if he ignores them, he's neutral, and lets them approach him. So I use this during socialization. During distraction at the park, if people are playing basketball, I'll walk the dog closer and closer. I'll start throwing pine cones while they're in the down position. I'll start throwing sticks, twigs, walk them by squirrels. And if they bolt or whatever, I give them a correction and work those distractions. So I'll usually do this from day 7 to day 14 in my program. Sometimes it takes three weeks. Sometimes. It takes longer. It really depends on the dog. But when you have your toolbox with all these different techniques, and then you have your tool belt with the stuff that works the most often, then now you have a good program to base it off of. So you can write down place on a piece of paper, write down every technique that you know or can find on how to teach the place command, then the next the recall, the next page sit, and now you have all these techniques, and then you can pick which ones work for you the best. In these next videos, I'll be showing you the techniques that I prefer on how I teach the place, how I teach the recall, so on and so forth. But here's a good outline of what we teach, when we teach it, how we teach it, as well as um, the importance of chaining things together and uh, pretty much how to create a good, solid uh, program. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below and I'll try to get to them. But go ahead and write this down, get used to it, and we'll start working on these videos here in a little while.